Sounds of Senegal, Ramadan. Those who travel do not need to fast. Mohammed is fasting anyway, though he's run out of dates, which he usually breaks his fast with. Luckily, Senegal is also mostly Muslim, and here and there, a crate of dates can be found. <laughs> We are surprised to learn that most of the vegetables in the market come from Morocco. We love Senegal. It's my fourth time in Senegal. Besides all the beauty, garbage seems more present here than in almost any other country. We are learning by doing. Yes, sweetie. Do we cross the sand? Do we cross the sand? <laughs> We prefer to stay wild overnight. However, the coast is so populated that finding a spot like this is fortunate. Even here, construction has taken place. A lone well supplies the few locals and us with water. All the houses seem to have been under construction stoppage for a long time. At the evening prayer, Maghrib, Mohammed is spotted and secretly photographed. Curiosity outweighs hesitations. And this begins hours long exchange about shared religion, culture, the world. A friendship momentum forms. And suddenly we are gifted by Ibrahima. While Milo, as always, clears the beach of plastic bottles. First destination, Dakar. The capital of Senegal is known for its great waves. However, I vividly remember what a nightmare it was to combine city life, camping and surfing here. On a whim, I write to our friend Patricia in Morocco. She lived in Senegal for a long time. Five minutes later, we are connected with Poncho, her husband's and children's old surf instructor. We are immensely grateful and now terribly excited as we are allowed to stay at the new surf camp of the Quicksilver Surf School in exchange for photos and videos. And the Angor Ride Surf Camp is located in a dream location. It overlooks the perfect right hand wave. In Goa. We're going to come for the coming days. Scoop up. Scoop up yourself. <laughs>
To get to the island, we have to ferry everything that's important and leave Moglia on the mainland. Poncho awaits us with his surf school boat. It's Milo's first time on the water. A new and very special chapter of our journey begins. The small island is romantic and lonely during the week. On weekends, it becomes incredibly crowded. Shane, Poncho's son, is the best little man around. <laughs> to our great surprise, one of our friend Patricia's sons is also here. <laughs> Sian was born in Ivory Coast, lived in Senegal and Morocco, and now is studying in France. J'ai appris à surfer ici avec Pancho il y a 16 ans maintenant. Et 16 ans après, on est toujours là. Ça change pas, c'est génial. En plus, maintenant, il est super bien installé à Ngor. La vague is just there, franchement, so top. Poncho was also drawn to Dhaka by the waves. He founded his surf school, trained some of the best surfers, and built a small surfing empire through hard work in anything but easy conditions. <laughs> His surf instructors are locals. His customers are mostly experts living in Dakar. Even the youngest here lose their fear of waves and sea urchins. I never thought I'd become a surf photographer. A real tough job, though. But it's also a matter of attitude. Poncho's wife, Yama, is from here. She's a wife, mother, and yoga teacher. With her yes to Poncho, she gave up her old life. Unfortunately, there's a lot of jealousy from the outside. Jealousy can sometimes turn into black magic. Besides Shane, we also love Musa. He's a janitor, night watchman, and moved here from Guinea for the job. During Ramadan, Mohammed and he break their fast together every evening, always with a soccer game. Bien sauvé, il a dit. <laughs> We quickly feel at home. Where are you going? I'm going to surf. Like yesterday was huge. I must see. Hi. Lucky me. I still alive and you also. <laughs> and I'm also, thank you. After the, all this yeah. wipeouts. Okay. Check, 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 check. Next to the rocks, next to the what we call them? Mommy and puppy. <laughs> and also the ursins. The ursins. The urgent. Hey, hey, hey. It's like a scary but beautiful. <laughs> Sometimes I doubt why I wanted to be a surfer. It's like shit. I have to stop this. <laughs> It's hard to fix by ourselves because the foam got inside. So, not even one hour, show me the other side. 
It's like a bite from a shark. Yeah, there are sharks at Angor. <laughs> Not even one hour in the water. What happened? Sea urchins. <laughs> Got washed. And I was like, and I touched it. I was like, ah! <laughs> and I ran. But I couldn't surf with it, it was not easy. Look at this one. You cannot surf in this spot without taking something with you. Make a story about me. Should make a story about me. Nunu is cleaning. She studied, but couldn't find any other work. According to her, women who come to work on the island are often accused of prostitution. I want to learn more from her. Especially as one of the women is stopped by the police and then collapses dead in the street. The situation of the Senegal is that they have the same rights as the men or they don't have it? What is the situation? Bon, non, c'est parce que ici on applique la le <rire> oh <rire> oh mais je veux pas, je veux pas parler comme ça mais c'est pas grave tu vois c'est pas c'est pas une quand je fais comme ça je le traque euh, bon. on laisse tomber on laisse tomber a special country a colorful and hospitable country but also a country full of tension unspoken feelings and violence. On the mainland, there have been fires for two days due to demonstrations. People are called to stay at home. We have a lot to digest. And somehow, we are still not quite good at making both of us feel good during Ramadan. I feel lonely and isolated. And I lack the words to express this without hurting Mohammed, for whom these only four weeks are sacred. My theme, which I try to balance out even more by cuddling with Milo at sunrise during the wave check. Shane brings us immense joy. Moi, <laughs> No fish court, so he shares his lunch bread, plus a little massage. Shane has also family in Morocco and France. Et tu préfères quel pays? La France et le Maroc. Voilà. Sénégal et le Pas? Pas, pas. Pas, pas, c'est quoi? Ouais, un petit peu, parce que. Voilà, je préfère, je préfère être plus avec les copains de, de la France ou de l'Europe ou d'être toujours. <laughs> the life of the little son of the Masson is among people, but also characterized by hard work.
die einen Blumen am Winter liegend. <lacht> New attempt for Mohammed to learn German. I was thinking of men who were No! This time with folk music on Trema. Take it! No, it's hard. You see, I'll say, oh, it's a fucking day late. You see, you see. And the shoes on me. Hold it. And Returning to Moglia is anything but joyful. Due to the riots, we couldn't get to her for five days. That has consequences. Someone broke in and vandalized everything after breaking the window. We are shocked, waiting for the police before we unlock. They stole everything. Now we have like to go to all the ambassades uh, after the police explain to them and if all we got all this we will need again the insurance that we paid a lot of money for it for the six months not good the police take me to the main building to report the damage everyone helps understands lends me their phone to call Mohammed, who stays with Moglia, and searches the trash cans in the area for our papers. They even give me money to return to him. It's a shitty feeling when someone breaks into your own home. It's somehow dirty, tainted, and we feel like the dumbest people in the world. We are so lucky, but the thief overlooked our emergency cash. He took all my hats, except one, my favorite army jacket that my aunt's son wore, my xylophone, a bottle of balsamic vinegar, and that's it. Yes, that's really it. We've just made peace with the fact that it is what it is. Just as we let go of anger and frustration, we find all our papers in the side pocket of our backpack. Mohammed had put them there while we packed for the island in the heat and haste and forgot about them completely. Alhamdulillah. We are the luckiest people in the world. I'm a bit sad about my jacket, and at the same time, I find it fascinating how little I cling to material things now. Especially when something is lost to me on this part of the earth, I know the one who has it needs it. The break-in doesn't leave me afraid to park our car anywhere. Mohammed suspects that someone we know broke in and simply watched that we didn't return for a long time. Opportunity makes thieves everywhere in the world. The thief, though, truly had no luck with us. What a day. You know what happened? So I was in, I was there like after, after people break to the car, I was looking, because I was thinking he will drop the passport somewhere, so I was looking in the rubbish bins around, 
And the taxi driver saw me and he called me, come cool, when I came to him, he food. He was thinking I'm looking for food in the rubbish. <laughs> ah, he was like, oh no, a white man doesn't have anything to eat. And you know what happened to me? Hmm. I drove with a gendarme and they took me and I felt so sorry that the gendarme gave me 2,000 that I can come back to you. <laughs> so sweet. I mean, shit happened. It's pretty shit. But we also made some good experiences today, I think. For sure. Over and out. Sometimes it's amazing what happens to us in a single day. Just an ordinary day. Often, these things come like a truck or train that runs us over. Yet, somehow, they are also opportunities. Opportunities to practice staying calm. I am over grateful that traveling repeatedly gives me the opportunity to prove to myself that people are good and that everything is okay. C'est joli? Ouais. C'est une qui a fait ça. It's never the situation that causes suffering, but how I decide to respond in that situation. Today, I say yes once again. Yes to life and everything it holds for us.